Good morning, evening, or afternoon, everybody. It's Kago coming at you with another video. So today, we're going to be talking about the best Phase 3 preparation tips that you guys can do. I took a look at my Phase 2 guide, and while some of these are the same, they take a vastly different shape here in Phase 3 and sort of how you can implement these things. And so I just wanted to share this list with you and hope it helps you out a bunch. But before we get into the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Everything you guys do helps my channel grow, helps me get discovered, and helps me help as many people as possible, which is the entire point of my channel. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So one of the most important things that you guys can have is a leveling plan for Phase 3. You know, if you're like me, you've probably been raid logging and there's not much to do other than play ults and stuff like that. And so having a leveling plan is important. So you can definitely draft that out now. As we saw, there are two ways to do it. It is going to be sort of dungeon grinding, which with the Scarlet Monastery, we saw take off so many people were doing it. And then there's going to be questing. And there are a few zones that you're able to quest in. So the places that you can dungeon grind are going to be uh, Zulfarak, Maranon, and Sunken Temple, as well as Uldamon. So Uldamon, will, you'll start off there, and then you will go to look for the other two to three. We don't know about Maradon or Sunken Temple. I'd imagine they are going to turn those into possible level up raids, but they just haven't said it yet. I definitely think Sunken Temple will be, but we have no official confirmation. Then there's going to be questing, and the places that you're primarily going to quest are going to be Booty Bay here in Stranglethorn Vale and doing some lower level, uh, or doing like the lower 40, upper 40, 45 quests that you can see right here in my questy. Um, and then you can also go to, for Horde and Alliance, you know, they have Blasted Lands, we have Swamp of Sorrows, so there is a little higher up quest here, not too great of a zone. The big ones are going to be Hinterlands, this one is huge, and definitely going to be a lot of conflict there, for sure. Um, and then other places are going to be here on Kalimdor, you have Tenaris, um, you have Feralus, as well as you have uh, Ungoro Crater once you get up towards 50, and then finally uh, Blasted Lands, as I already said. But those are going to be the core zones that you're going to be questing in for Phase 3, so knowing their quests, familiarizing yourself with those can be pretty good. The next tip I have is make sure that you have consumables and you know you have your world buff spoon i'll obviously not just have spark of inspiration here but i will also have dark moon fair i think that'll be a huge buff it's just 10 percent damage while depending on how you're playing you might die right away with those and that would suck you can still have a ton of fun with those um and then this is sort of a super min maxi thing but you can also use your consumables where, you know, there's still extra damage, saves you time, and if you're going to level, you know, time is everything. So just, you know, firepower, lesser arcane, cheap. You don't have to use them, um, obviously up to you. But another very min maxi tip, and this is sort of if you're going for like world first racing, because of dark um, BFD buff, it works at level 39. So if you had a character that you wanted to prepare, um, you could technically go to level 39, get them 99% EXP, get the BFD buff, which lets you move 20% faster. It's not that huge because you have mounts, but it could be a small advantage for you to have Spark of Inspiration, BFD, and Dark Moon Fair. Like I said, super min maxi, but just a little tip to let you know because it does not remove the buff upon hitting level 40. It will keep it on you, which is really interesting. Then next we have get essential flight paths. So the essential flight paths that you are going to want is if you're a horde, here stonard for swamp of stars. If you're alliance, nether grade keep for blasted lands. You probably already have that one as well as you probably already have stranglethorn veil uh, and booty bay. But if you don't, definitely make sure you get them. Then the key ones are going to be hinterlands. Um, you can get airy peak if you're alliance or raven tusk village if you're a horde. Uh, easy way to get the Horde one is actually to fly to Arathi Highlands, go to the bridge, take the boat here, which takes you up here, and then you can just uh, swim up the 
shore all the way to the uh, hinterlands right here and get the flight path. I think that is actually faster than taking the Airy Pequay and running through here at 40 and getting attacked by every level 50 mob there is, as well as it pairs nicely if you're going to get the rune, but just a little tip with that. Um, then definitely make sure that you are going over here to get um, Tenaris Gadgetsan if you have not gone there already. It can be very beneficial. And then make sure you go and get Ungoro Crater. And while you're at it, since you've already come this far, you can just go and get Silithus as well. It's a pretty easy, clear path from um, Ungoro. It'll be worth your time because you will need it eventually. But Silithus is way too high from 50 to 60. It's definitely an in the game zone. Um, another one that you can do is Fellwood, but Fellwood's sort of going to be an in-game zone, but if you are going up here for anything like Winter Spring, which I will talk about in a moment, um, you should stop by here and get this if your Horde Alliance is all the way at the tippy top. Um, the next tip that I want to have or give you guys is make sure you have a profession plan going into this next phase. This is where we are going to see max level professions. So our professions are going to go up to 300. We're going to have tons of in-game stuff. I'd imagine they're going to give us some uh, unique recipes aimed at level 50, but I do not know that for a fact. Um, it'll, be, it'll be a little weird because this is where, like another tier would be great like maybe we go 300 and then we have 375 something like that obviously i don't know but it's good this is where it gets a little strange with the tiering system but two very important things that come out are going to be specializations for a lot of the professions they could have been done now at 225 but they locked them for whatever reason they didn't want us to get too op of gear um, but for phase three the specializations will be live so very important to look into those develop a plan with what you're going to want to be Blacksmithing and engineering are the two that are super important Tailoring does not have one. However, my profession plan is going to make sure that I Go up here to winter spring and go and get the moon cloth recipe as well as the rune cloth uh, bag recipe these are two recipes that are sold here at everlook they disabled them in phase one and i actually haven't been back to look here in phase two so i don't know if they're up right now however this is going to be my logout spot for phase three launch just because hopefully the vendors will be available because starting to make moon cloth will be important because it has a four day cooldown i believe in classic and so you just need 250 tailoring you can have the mage weave cloth ready to go to get 250 tailoring learn moon cloth then you're going to need some fell cloth which unfortunately you're probably not going to be able to get to level 50 because it usually drops off these satyrs but fell cloth will be a tremendous farm in phase three with Fellwood. So it's just something to keep in mind and look forward to. Um, next, I make sure you guys clean up your inventory. Inventory space is going to be massive. Pretty much I would, you know, get rid of these unstable microfilaments, some gear pieces that I'm no longer using. Um, but largely I kind of already have it still cleaned up. Just a few consumables and enchants and stuff, but just kind of picking my bis gear setup that I want to level with and then moving on from that. Not too crazy of a tip right there, but it definitely helps you out because some people's bags are a mess. Um, then one of the final tips is going to be grinding your PvP gear out. Um, getting exalted with uh, Warsong Gulch as well as Arathi Basin if you haven't because there are level 50 bracers similar to these level 40 bracers but the level 50 ones are just a better version of them so you will get epic bracers as well as you will be able to get some epic stuff from the Arathi people. The Arathi people is level 60 stuff, but it's just something you could sort of grind out right now. Um, they do have decent revered gear that you can get with this, like these boots. They make you run faster and they give you attack power, but it's just something to consider as well as this girdle for level 48. So it's just stuff to look forward at, look at, you know, you can get it, um, but it's up to you. Exalted won't be until later, but a lot of people are farming the STV event to get uh, those logs and sort of grinding this AB rep for that. Then finally, at level 50, we every single class gets a class quest, which provides a very unique and powerful item for most classes. 
So most of those are Sunken Temple, and if Sunken Temple becomes the level upgrade, I don't know exactly what form that'll take, but you can do some research if you've never done the class quests before. Look them up, figure them out, see what you're going to get, because we are on the Nax patch, which means class quests will be in the game, and they have some very powerful rewards. So just know what your class quest is going to be. Some of them have you run all around the world and do stuff before it takes you into Sunken Temple, but ultimately every single class quest takes you into Sunken Temple. So it's just very important to sort of look at that stuff and figure it out. But anyway, guys, that is it for this video. I truly hope it helps you. If you have any things you want to add, any tips you want to talk about, anything you think I missed or you think I'm just flat out wrong about, definitely tell me in the comments below. I love reading them and hearing from you guys. But until next time, I'll see you later. Have a great day. Bye-bye. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so, so much for watching. It truly means a lot to me. If you happen to find anyone that you know would also benefit from watching this video, please, please, please share it with them. It helps me out a ton and allows me to keep doing what I love every single day. And that is gaming and sort of helping people any way that I can. So finally, thank you so much and I hope you have a fantastic day. Goodbye.